Hey guys, my name is Matt. I'm the keeper here at the Houston Zoo in the Houston Toad Recovery Program. And today I'm going to give you guys a little tour of the Houston Toad facility, uh, talk to you a bit about what we do out here. It's a really cool time to be here at this building because uh, we're right in the middle of our breeding season. So you guys will get to see some eggs and some toad breeding and we can answer any questions you guys have. So we can go on in. Amphibians are really sensitive, so uh, all of our rooms are biosecure, so we, we change our shoes anytime we're coming in and out. So the Houston toad uh, was the first amphibian put on the endangered species list back in 1970. We can give you a little, a little shot of the toads here. So this is a male and a female toad. Can show you a quick difference between them here. So anytime we're handling the toads, we do wear gloves, again, just because these guys are such a sensitive species. Here's a Houston toad. So this is a little boy. You can tell he's a boy because he's got that blue throat. It's very vibrant. Uh, if we're lucky, we might hear some calling while we're in here. And when they call, that big throat expands out into a little bubble, and it's a, uh, a really high trill that these guys do. So you might be able to hear, he's making some little noises now, but that's not the trill. You'll definitely know when we hear that. And I'll show you a girl here, just so you guys can see the difference. So you see she doesn't have that throat sack or anything like that. So we have about 500 toads in this building, or in this collection, I should say. Uh, and the, big, the point of this building is just to breed toads as much as we can so that we can put them out in the wild. This is one of the coolest things the Houston Zoo does because we are putting animals back into the wild through here. So Kelly asks how many species are there. So the Houston toad is just one species of toad. Um, the toads that you guys typically see in your backyard are actually gold. Even though we're in Houston, um, the guys that you're seeing are most, most likely not Houston toads, unfortunately. Uh, so Houston toads are what are called a, a, a very spe uh, species, excuse me, a, uh, an environmental specialist. So their environment is very, very specific. So these guys live under very thick uh, treetops, uh, in a sandy, loamy soil. Uh, whereas Gulf Coast toads are, are species generalists. They live pretty much anywhere. You can find Gulf Coast toads living and breeding in parking lots. So Teresa asks, what do they eat? So these guys eat uh, pretty much anything smaller than them that is moving. So these guys' vision is based on movement, kind of like a T-Rex in Jurassic Park. They'll, uh, they'll track anything smaller than them, and they pretty much go for uh, inverts, insects, that sort of thing. And their favorite food here tends to be crickets. So Julie asks, can they drink water? They do drink. These guys being amphibians, they also absorb a lot of fluid through their skin. Uh, they breathe that way as well. They do uh, some oxygen exchange through their skin. Amal asks, what are their predators? Uh, these guys are eaten by pretty much everything they share an environment with. They are uh, not very fast, and they're, uh, as you can see in the video here, they're, they're pretty beefy little guys. So these guys get, get gone after by raccoons, uh, bobcats, birds, snakes, uh, lots of stuff will go after these guys. Hey Matt, can you explain the room a little bit more in detail and what goes on in this room? Yeah, absolutely. So if you want to follow me, I can show you our breeder tanks around the corner here. So like I said, it's a cool time to be out here because we are breeding right now. So you can see a male and a female in this tank, and she is actively in the process of laying eggs right now. So all those little beads you're seeing are thousands and thousands of eggs. So a typical egg strand for these guys is about 5,000 eggs, and that's just in one lay they'll, they'll do that. So if you come over here, you can see these guys are breeding as we speak. 
So when frogs and toads breed, they breed through a process called amplexus. And basically all that is, is the boy gets behind her and gives her a really tight hug and kind of squeezes the eggs out of her. And he releases his sperm at the same time, so he's fertilizing them as they are coming out of her. But all the fertilization is external. So Levi asks, what do they feel like? So these guys are kind of bumpy. Again, we never touch them with our bare skin just because as clean as our hands are, uh, we can transmute stuff to them pretty easily. Uh, but they are pretty bumpy, and that's actually a good way to tell the difference between toads and frogs as well. Uh, as a general rule, frogs have really, really smooth skin and much longer legs because they're really good jumpers. Uh, toads generally have squattier legs and that lumpy skin. So these guys do move around by hopping, but they don't have those long leaps that you see out of a frog generally. So Anna asks, can visitors see these toads? So unfortunately, this building is behind the scenes. We are uh, right behind our vet clinic. So you can't come visit this building. So this is a really special little video we're doing. Uh, but you can see these guys in the reptile building. We have a native amphibian exhibit in there that has a couple of Houston toads. And uh, another spot is our swap shop. We have a couple of Houston toads in the swap shop as well. So you can see them there. How many toads are in this building or in the room we're in right now, Matt? Uh, in this room, I want to say we have about 150, and like I said, I believe we have 100 or uh, 500 toads total in the program right now. So we have this program and we breed these guys because they are a critically endangered species. Uh, so again, this, is, this really is one of the coolest programs we have here at the Houston Zoo along with Atwater's Prairie Chickens. Uh, so we believe in the wild there's only a couple thousand of these guys left. So when I say that there's 500 toads here, that's a really big portion of, uh, of the species. Uh, and a lot of you guys might be too young to remember, but there was a big fire up in these guys' habitat just a couple of, well, not a couple of years ago, I suppose almost 10 years ago now. But when that fire swept through, it really decimated this species even further. So having a colony like this we can rather quickly reestablish the species in their native environment. Where do you guys release the egg strands at? So we tend to release these guys in uh, Bastrop County mostly. That's where we do the bulk of our work in uh, Bastrop State Park and the surrounding areas. Uh, but these guys were formerly found all throughout Central Texas and into uh, Southeast Texas. They're, uh, they're isolated to just a couple of counties now, unfortunately. So Jennifer asks, what is the difference between toads and frogs? So frogs have really, really smooth skin and they tend to have much longer legs because they're really good jumpers. I think everybody has a, a good picture of the, the frog jumping off the lily pad. Uh, toads tend to be a lot bumpier. Their skin is a lot rougher and uh, they have stubbier legs generally. So they still hop around for movement, but uh, they, they don't leap quite like the frogs do. How much does an average male versus female weigh? So the males and females tend to be about the same size weight-wise uh, until breeding season. In breeding season, the female puts on a lot of weight because she is just filled up with eggs. Uh, but generally, they're, they're about 50 grams, I would say. So Heather asks how high they can jump. I would say if they really tried, they might be able to jump an inch. They're, uh, they're not the most athletic of animals. So can you explain the tanks over here on the left of us? Yeah, absolutely. Versus so what we saw on the right? The, we, and we can go back over here too, if, if you'd like to see them from the front. So this is just where the toads actually live. And everybody lives with their brothers and sisters. So in these tanks, everyone is related to everybody. Uh, and when it comes time to breed, we, uh, we do a lot of genetic science on these guys and we pair them up for who we believe will have the healthiest kids. And then we put them in the breeder tanks that you guys just saw so that we can make those eggs.
So Sheila asks, how many toad eggs do we release? So this year, uh, we're probably going to be at about 600,000 eggs released, which is pretty great. Uh, in previous years, we have released well over a million. Uh, you might think, why do we have that discrepancy in number? It's because this year we sent a ton of toads off to other facilities. Um, and that's really, really great because that means we're getting other facilities on board with this program. So it might be a little lapse in the eggs we released this year, but ultimately more people making eggs, more toads going back into the environment. That's exactly what we want. Um, you know, the ultimate goal of this project is to put ourselves out of business because we certainly want the Houston toad doing really, really well out there. And uh, you know, if that happens, We'll clean all these tanks out, then we'll get another species that needs help. So Levi asks, how long does it take the eggs to hatch? So once the eggs are fertilized, uh, I would say it takes, from fertilization, it takes about a month to a month and a half for them to become what we call emergence, so little baby toads that will crawl up on land. Matt, why do we have surplus written on certain tanks in here? So surplus just means that this group of toads, this, uh, this little group of brothers and sisters is a little bit overrepresented. So if more facilities wanted to get on board, these might be the toads that we would start with. We would send these off first, just so they're everywhere, you know what I mean? And can you tell us a little bit more about your background and how you got involved with the Houston Toad program? Yeah, so um, I used to work at uh, Moody Gardens, another AZA facility, and I worked with uh, reptiles and amphibians down there. I was down there for about five years. I began my work up here uh, about four years ago now, and I worked in the primate department, working mostly with chimps and orangutans. Um, and last year, I just wanted to get a little bit more involved with some of our conservation programs here at the zoo. Um, so I switched over here, and I, I absolutely love it. It's very, very cool to be able to put these guys out in the wild. Okay. So we've seen this room, so we're going to switch over, and you guys can see room three, uh, and my colleague Brittany is going to talk to you even more about Houston toads. Hey guys, I'm Brittany, and we're going to go into room three now. We are going to do the same thing we did for room one, so we are going to change our shoes when we go in this room. So now that we're in room three, we can't go back into room one. Uh, this room actually has some adults in here that were born from wild strands. So because of that, we've got a little more going on in here, so we can't go back into room one. Now these are my breeding tanks over here. You'll see that we still have some that haven't been filled. These guys have finished though, and eventually I will take them out of there. Um, but we do have some tanks that are full of eggs here. And like Matt said, it's about 5,000 eggs a strand. Uh, some will be a little more, some will be a little less. But on average, we get about 5,000 eggs a strand. And you'll see that these guys over here are actually still laying. The male is still amplexed. And he does that so that he is the first one to fertilize those eggs. If he doesn't do that, other males could come in and fertilize those eggs and he doesn't want that. He wants to be the number one when it comes to her at this point. So they're making that happen and you'll see I have 10 tanks in here and all 10 of my tanks either have a breeding pair or they have eggs going on in them. I've got another one down here who's still laying. And then if we go back to this tank right here, this female is actually 11 years old. She just had a birthday on the 19th, to my knowledge. She's the oldest toad we have in the program right now. And as you see, she just laid some nice healthy eggs. So Kelly asks, how many eggs on average survive when released? So on average, about one in a thousand will survive to adulthood, right? So one in a thousand. So if you look at a 5,000 egg strand, you're gonna have about 
five adult toads that come out of that. And to just do, you know, predators in the wild, as Matt mentioned, these guys are tasty to just about everything. Um, eaten quite a bit. And as you'll see from time to time, they are not very, uh, they're not very good at moving around. If you'll see that guy in the back, he looks a little awkward moving around. They're not fast, they don't jump very high, so predators enjoy them. Jennifer, do, Jennifer asks, do they clean themselves? So no, they do not clean themselves, but they do shed their skin, just like other amphibians and reptiles. They look very awkward when they do. Uh, right now, you'll see that they're mostly dry, as but when they get ready to shed, they get very glossy, and then their shed kind of starts coming off, and they eat it as it comes off for the most part. So it's not like a snake who sheds their skin all in one and then kind of slithers away from it. They eat their skin as they shed it. Paige asks, what is their lifespan? So in the wild, these guys would probably only live for about two or three years. Just about enough time to breed once or twice, and then they would perish. Here, obviously, like I just said, we've got that 11-year-old girl over there. Longer here in captivity, so because we take care of them, we've got a lot who may be over five. So into, of course, that 11-year-old right there, we've got a couple 10-year-olds. Most of these right now are older because this is for our colony here at the zoo. So half of these eggs from each of these tanks are going to stay here and the other half are going to get released out into the wild. And the ones we keep here, it'll take them about a month or two to emerge into toadlets and then we will split them in the rooms and then we will start taking care of them and hopefully in a, about two years we will have babies from those guys. So Trini asks, how long can they be underwater? So they do not spend much time underwater. These guys live on land. Now they can swim a little bit and they can swim under the water a little bit, hold their breaths a little bit, but for the most part, they do not swim. They live on land and they only go into the water to lay their eggs. And speaking of eggs, since 2013, we have released about four and a half million eggs into the wild. So that's four and a half million eggs into the wild since 2013. Now before that time, we were eggs and toadlets. We were head starting them. So if you turn around here, we can actually see some toadlets here in these tanks. These are from the year before. So we've got these guys in here. They're back there in the moss. And then if you take a look at this tank, we've got some other toadlets. Okay. So thank you guys so much for joining us here at the Houston Zoo, um, here in the Houston Toad Recovery Program. Again, my name is Brittany. You spoke earlier to my colleague, Matt. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, make sure you check out our emergency fund. We are here every day taking care of these guys, but they do need to eat. Right? So you can always take a look at that and donate to our emergency fund, right? And make sure you tune in tomorrow at 11 a.m. We'll have another teacher chat for you guys.